I have said in the speech on accepting it that I did feel a sense of imposter syndrome because the other uh, three books were, you know, really uh, proper, serious books. Uh, mine is kind of a lot more light-hearted than, than those. But, I mean, I can't say I'm not grateful and uh, honoured. Um, but I, I think I might have had a lot of luck. In fiction, people read about Madame Bovary or Anna Karenin or Hedda Gabler, uh, these fictional characters whose life goes off the rails. Non-fiction tends to avoid the, the failures. And, and so I was interested in, in how you could uh, make a, a non-fiction life of, of someone who's, uh, whose life just had a kind of downward spiral in a way. Uh, royal biographies tend to be very, very boring and they start with the great, 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 great grandparents and then move and by about page 150 you get to the actual birth of the... And so I just wanted to cut out all the boring stuff and, and this was a way of making it a mosaic, making it non-chronological. I mean, it has a vague chronology to it. But also, I thought a way to treat her um, a lot of it is humorous, or, but also with someone whose life wasn't entirely fulfilled. You, I'd like um, imagining, you know, if she had married Peter Townsend, who for various reasons she was either prevented from married, marrying or went off the idea of marrying, or uh, Picasso, for instance, really fancied her and told his friends, you know, he designed a wedding dress and things like that. Uh, what, if, what if she had married Picasso? What would, her, what, if, what would it be like if she was the the firstborn and she had become the queen? Would her character have changed to become like the Queen's is, you know, honourable and doing the right thing? Or would she have just been a, a kind of naughty queen? And so I was, I was interested in exploring these different avenues, these parallel lives.